So you're probably wondering about the title of the live stream about Doctor Who apparently starting filming today. Now, we've not actually had a 100% confirmation, but it does align with what we've learned before. This was something back in, uh, actually, yeah, it was a, it was a couple of months ago. Uh, Bad Wolf were putting out a jobs listing for standby props. Now, standby props, in a layman's terms, is an art department assistant who helps to go through the scripts with the head of the art department head and basically put aside all of the props. Depending on the budget, they can go into a massive trolley or they've got their own little segment. And what happens is that they make sure that the props are in the right place at the right time and they assist with the art department. It is a role that does not necessarily need to be one that has got extensive pre-production. So what we can assume here is that this is actual filming proper or at least the very tail end of pre-production. And this is the 7th of November 2022 up until July 2023. And we know because of these dates from April to July, these were the David Tennant and Catherine Tate 60th anniversary, um, 60th anniversary things. One second, chat is the chat stuck? One second, let me refresh that then. We can safely assume that either this was the proposed start date of Doctor Who coming back or around this period. Either way, people have been saying that filming has been pushed back, but I have not seen any sort of indication like, or any evidence to suggest. Otherwise, people have just been saying it's been rumoured, but we don't actually know yet for sure. Either way, it's looking like it's going to be starting in November. And reinforcing this, we go into Rachel Talale's Instagram, and she posted this uh, today, uh, earlier this morning, a photo of a empty studio space with a police public call box way, way, way off in the distance. It's blue light illuminating at the top. Talale has captioned the photo, if I could but reach it, and fulfill my destiny and russell commented a few hours later saying oh that studio is full now kiss 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 so presumably unless rachel talali is on board for series 14 this was a photo of her from her first 60th anniversary special which she is directing and since then this studio space is now full of set dressing or maybe it's storage who knows but either way movements are happening this is actually happening filming is going to be commencing very very shortly if it hasn't already but it was like it, for the 60th anniversary they only announced that shooting out was was going to be the doctor david tennant and Catherine tate were going to be returning to the series because they were filming in camden market out in the open they needed to um was it in bristol as well when neil patrick harris was there they needed to announce that before it leaked they wanted to control the story so don't be surprised if in the coming days and weeks we get more casting updates or we can get more announcements, including but not limited to Shooty Gatwa's new costume. Because what I believe is happening is that they've they've done the three anniversary specials, all of them starring David Tennant and Catherine Tate to varying degrees. Those have been directed by Rachel Talale, Chanyu Button, and a third person whose name I cannot recall because I do these live. Uh, he's the director of um, This Is Going To Hurt and Ghosts. I'm sure chat could maybe fill me in. So we've got those three specials, and according to the press release that we got after the broadcast of The Power of the Doctor, there's going to be a festive special which will star Shuti Gatwa. Shuti Gatwa is probably coming to the end of his filming time on Sex Education, also filmed in the UK. So he'll be hopping straight from that to Doctor Who, presumably a Christmas special or a festive special, and then Series 14 proper. So we should be getting a costume reveal or something in the coming days or in the coming weeks. It probably has already been decided, which is very, very exciting. However, stop the presses, folks. Stop the presses because Disney, here represented by Rose Tyler in this, uh, in this video. Wilson, I've got the lottery money. We've got some news coming today from Broadcast Now which you cannot read because you need to have an account in order to do it. Thankfully, TV Zone UK got the story here. Doctor Who budget to triple under Disney Plus deal. As revealed last month, the BBC and Disney branded television have come together to transform Doctor Who into a global franchise for UK audiences and the rest of the world. Broadcast report. <laughs> nice transition there. Thank you so much. I, had to, I quickly had to sort that out before I went live. Broadcast reports that Doctor Who's existing budget of one to three million pounds per episode could triple with an episodic budget of 10 million. This would transform Doctor Who into a one hundred million pound franchise. The math there, of course, is that it is ten episodes, each with an episodic budget of ten million pounds apiece. 
A source told Broadcast that it's an, quote, incredibly exciting time for the franchise, with Russell T. Davis expected to expand the universe with spin-off series similar to Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures. A source told the publication the BBC had to make the decision for the future success of Doctor Who because any show of scale needs a partner. Reliability is the most important factor, irrespective of how many episodes you make or who the Doctor is. If you can bring in a single partner with one distribution agreement while retaining exclusivity in the UK, that is the best of the both worlds for the BBC. I can see a little bit of hesitancy in the chat in terms of, oh, this is bad, Disney are going to take over the franchise and stuff. However, because this is a distribution deal, I think Disney are mainly just throwing their weight behind it so that it makes, outside of the UK at least, Doctor Who to be a much more blockbuster event type television in order to draw in a bigger audience, to draw in more potential subscribers or to retain more potential subscribers to their Disney Plus streaming service when they're not broadcasting shows such as uh, ones from the Marvel Cinematic Universe or from the Star Wars Universe etc etc. Now what I'll say the average hour of TV in the UK has a budget of around one million pounds that is the average hour of television in the UK. So the fact that we could be going tenfold that is quite extraordinary but Doctor Who at least in the past couple of years for me at least does not seem to be a franchise that I think was kind of wanting for money because if you like you know the incredible direction of uh, people like Jamie Magnus Stone or as her Salim or uh, Nida Manzor uh, in series 12 for example and Mark Tondere in series 11 Doctor Who in the past couple of years, in my opinion, has never looked better, with the exception of a weird, like, slightly grey filter that was in some Series 11 and Series 12 stories. The, it looks terrific, you know, the double negative uh, visual effects work, it looks absolutely incredible. But I don't think it was one that was kind of wanting for uh, for production values. So I'm actually, I'm genuinely curious as to what over tripling the budget of an average episode could actually do. High voltage is right. I like uh, I like um, my Doctor Who looking slightly cheap, but that is true. It's just it's difficult because you do sometimes want your small scale stories like Midnight. You want your stories um that you you, you kind of want a good mix you do want your big stories uh like you know journey's end and the stolen earth which is like uh world hopping and you go to different places and there's like hundreds of daleks on screen and stuff you you want to try and um the chat keeps jumping screen yeah i saw it seems to be flip, flipping in and out that doesn't happen very often for a story thing anyway. um tony cross says bigger stars maybe when you when it comes to like disney plus though when it when you've got their like star wars shows you don't often get that much stunt casting you've got like andy circus in the latest series of andor and he's meant to be absolutely terrific i've, I've not watched andor yet so and when it comes to british talent in the uk i think doctor who is almost running out of names to pick it's mad uh, there are so many people who have already been involved in doctor who to, to one extent or another many people have gone on to have massive careers you know like andrew garfield like um, carrie mulligan etc so what i would like the budget to be kind of put forward to is just Firstly, making sure that the people who make and produce and work on Doctor Who are well looked after and compensated for their work. Not necessarily, let's throw £5 million an episode to an increased VFX budget. No, let's make sure that the people who are working on Doctor Who in the UK and in Cardiff are able to earn a good living, especially in the current cost of living crisis. Who knows, maybe the tripling of the budget is to try and account for energy costs and energy prices. That is not um, an exaggeration at this point. So... Also, there was some talk as well, like last week or the week before when the Disney Plus deal was announced, that Disney would not have exclusivity rights to any prospective spin-offs. And I think what they meant by that was that Disney Plus can't make Doctor Who spin-offs or shows in the Who universe, whatever you want to call it, that are exclusive to Disney Plus and Disney Plus only. So what I presume that means is that if Disney Plus want to foot the bill for any spin-offs or anything in the universe, it would have to be an uh, it would have to have parity with the Doctor Who show proper. For example, having something on BBC One or BBC Two or even BBC Three or CBBC, whatever the future of that broadcast channel is, the home of the Sarah Jane Adventures. They'd have to have it there, and then outside of the UK, it goes on Disney Plus. They wouldn't be able to say have like they wouldn't be able to, for example, have the Ace McShane adventures. But in the UK, you can only watch it on Disney Plus. I believe that is what the deal clarifies. It uh, if they are really investing this additional money and going through Bad Wolf and the BBC to inject more cash and cash flow into the show itself to increase the production values, or you know maybe 
uh, be able to lure in some actors and some talent with a bigger paycheck at the end of the day, then, you know, that's a net good for Doctor Who. But it also means that it's just a net good as well for the UK film industry, especially since it's so difficult right now. Like many uh, TV productions are currently either delaying or calling off their their shoots, and you know some of, some of those like lower to mid budget productions are really being hit hard by the cost of living crisis at the moment. So hopefully, the people who are working on Doctor Who over the next what should, what should we call it, like seven or eight months, if we're going from November to July 2023, hopefully that they are being well paid and well compensated. That is, of course, the the massive priority. Kevin Blower, maybe extra budget can get us more overseas filming, maybe some big names, US cast members. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I think once you've got the bigger budget so that you can get maybe a big star like, say, Ian McKellen, who you could only afford to have a very short and uh, very wasted audio role in The Snowmen, something like that would be... Uh, would be ideal to give Doctor Who a prestige that it's always had, but maybe has never been able to fully uh, been able to fully uh, capitalize on. Turn across more money for marketing too, I suppose. True, yes, especially internationally, and anything that gets shared internationally, like an American or Disney Plus style trailer for Doctor Who, will leak over to the UK in the form of like YouTube or you know, other TV spots and things like, you know, because of the of the internet, we're going to be seeing this marketing as well. Whether or not we see these trailers or TV spots appear on UK TV, that's that's a matter for, for BBC Studios. One thing that an increased budget could do for Doctor Who, though, is to really go extravagant on the set of the interior of the TARDIS. And if you go through the Leakly Bible, now the Leakly Bible was the proposed series in the 1990s that eventually became the TV movie, but the Leakly Bible was sort of like the, 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 the pitch to broadcasters. And you can see in the concept art and some of the initial ideas in this Bible for the Eighth Doctor's TARDIS was that you'd have a control room and then you'd have a staircase going upwards. And instead of a screen which would show you where you landed, you'd have this great great big like viewing platform this great big window i think that would be really like cool to do not necessarily creating it like like for like from the leakly bible because whoever drew this would be do some residuals i think if they use that idea but you know really making the tardis feel like a home like a home that is also a ship that would be really cool i think like, like i said like i said you don't have to steal the exact idea but if disney are paying for the interior of the tardis you could really really go a bit nuts with the interior design of it it's like here we go this is the uh this is the proposed tardis control room from the leakly bible that's really cool I, at least I, I think it's cool concept art at least whether or not it's something that would have worked in execution uh who knows but yeah i, I read through this entire leakly bible uh, on stream like a year a year and a half ago you should check out the old video but yeah Josh Sobchak, I wonder if we'll see more animated remakes on Disney+. Plus. It's a streaming service, so they'll put anything on there. That's true, and I also think, considering the budgets and the manpower required, or the, the budgets and the manpower that was assembled for the animated recreations for, like, Galaxy 4 and Abominable Snowmen, I'm not saying they were super, like, shoestring cheap productions, but in the grand scheme of animated productions for tv they were pretty cheap ones and i think that would be like a drop in the bucket financially for disney who have recently just released a pixar's like cars animated series and one based on baymax from big hero 6 which i'm sure the budgets for those shows were 10 100 fold more than the animated recreations for doctor who and you know you're guaranteed to sell the steelbooks at least or many of like copies of the home media releases because doctor who fans are going to doctor who fans and that's what you know, we're going to collect those steelbooks so you know disney could do it but i think the priority first and foremost for from bbc worldwide's perspective and from rusty davis's perspective is to get the first series with shooty gatwa finished and lay any groundwork or seeds or whatever for any potential spin-offs later on. It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if in series 14 there are like throwaway references to say Torchwood or a, like a Torchwood type like laying of the groundwork like a, an obscure uh, or like a background name or incidental character or detail or something that if fans gravitate to it can then branch out into a spin-off. The priority as much as we really would love to speculate is getting shooting at was first series done and off the ground with the brand new production team and with bad wolf i think bad wolf are sensible to 
basically from November to July, just focus on getting one series of their TV show off the ground. And if they can do that, and if it's successful and it pans out, then they branch out. I don't want to see them midway through Shooty's first series and then, oh, we're doing Rose Tyler Earth Defense after all this time. We're doing the Dorothy McShane adventures. We're going to meet Melanie Bush and her adventures on Ice World with Sabalom Glitz or something. Like, w let's please have a little bit of restraint, as fun as it is to speculate on these things. Thank you as well to uh, Timothy uh, Kralik for the $5 super chat. Wonderful chat all of them i don't think the increase of the budget is 100 percent a good thing i think the roger corman-esque lower budget of the show is a feature and not a bug to an extent i think when it comes to like the jodie whittaker era of the show you go like some of the production values and some of the cinematography and some of the effects and the practical makeup and stuff is a sight to behold and it's beautiful blockbuster sometimes like prestige tv i think that is something it, it's a look that doctor who has worn really really well in the past couple of years i just remember just being elated watching the ghost monument in 2018 and the first scenes with mark tondere and that really long continuous shot on that uh, on that ship that's crashing onto desolation and the actor sean dooley he's like going around the spaceship and he presses some buttons and the panel explodes in front of him he goes into the the, the floor gratings lifts it up and flicks like a manual shield twists the twist the the handle and everything and puts the thing back it made it feel so lived in and beautiful and it was it gave it a real sense of tangibility and it made the opening of the ghost monument something genuinely special in my opinion uh, and um, timothy uh, says my last name is actually pronounced krylik cry okay sorry i apologize uh, I i've read your name a few times uh, on stream before and i yeah, <laughs> and i'm sad to know that i've got it wrong every single time i apologize timothy krylik i do apologize but i also think you can still have the beautiful effects and also a little bit of um of cheesy costume and stuff for example i went to the doctor who exhibition in liverpool the worlds of wonder and one of the costumes they had there was the fisher king this thing is really cool but it is just a bloke in a really cumbersome suit voiced by darth maul like it has a really striking profile like when he's he's cornering the 12th doctor but it is just a bloke in a rubber suit and i think you are able to find that balance i think that really works now i think disney will want to lean more into the prestige tv they will want to try and lean into the cinematic uh forum what's it, whatever it's called the the i get this wrong every time the 360 um digitally like screen set that they've been doing for the mandalorian which sony do have access to they do have access to it and disney have been doing it for their disney plus shows of course so i'm sure that disney volume why do i keep on i keep on thinking it begins with f volume so they'll have access to volume which will of course not come cheap but will add a lot of uh legitimacy to doctor who's environments whenever they go to a different planet i still hope that they do film a lot in like on earth and on location like in bristol like they did with neil patrick harris stagecraft volume thank you yes um but yeah th there is a exhibition uh, well there was an exhibition in liverpool it was its last day yesterday and i went there on saturday uh, me and poorly aged who went uh, on its last weekend it's moving up to edinburgh next week or the week after so if you missed it when it was in liverpool the worlds of wonder exhibition you can check it out in edinburgh in the near future and people in the chat as well in terms of spin-offs jeremy duncan if we get a mcgann spin-off i would actually cry that actually seems something logistically possible now like i'm it would be really cool to see like a paul mcgann series let's say like eight episodes and it is similar to rose where you know the eighth doctor is hiding from something he's been all happy-go-lucky and joyful with a brand new companion who he saves from imminent danger and then maybe halfway through the series the time lords like pick him up and say we need you to help us fight this time war and then something happens to the companion or the eighth doctor abandons the companion or something and then we go like the first days of the eighth doctor in the time war i think that would be really cool and i also think paul mcgann 
with a 10 million pound per episode budget would make himself av available for it um eight is on the run from the war he is by the end but i think it would be really cool to it would be a good way to like introduce the audience to him as well so we do get the best of both worlds we get the fun you know these shoes they fit perfectly romanticist doctor and then halfway, the audience and the Doctor get the rug pulled from under them, or the companion surrogate character, and then it becomes like an introduction to the Time War. I think that would be a really good way to approach it. So then you do actually have a uh, a mid-series cut-off point as well, where everything changes, and you're, you basically bring the audience uh, a, a new perspective to bring them into the finale of the series. That would be That, that would be my pitch for it. Uh, Michael Jeremy so, sort of like Charlie Pollard. It would it would be a completely original companion. Toby, wouldn't a McGann series go against Big Finish? I f firstly, Disney don't care, and neither should they care. The TV show shouldn't really care either. But I think if you are that insistent on the continuity, like w when does the Eighth Doctor in the Big Finish like become aware of the Time War? Is it during? One second, Paul McGann, Big Finish. Let's f let's figure this out together, me and you. Okay, you you've insisted on this rabbit hole, and now we're gonna go for it. What about first Doctor stories of David Bradley? David Bradley might be a bit too old to front a big series like Doctor Who, though. Like it's one thing getting him sat on a robe, like sat on a box in a in a robe in front of a green screen for the power of the Doctor, but David Bradley is. Uh, he's he was old when he did Harry Potter, and he's uh, that was over 20, 20 years ago. I don't know if there's a specific time. If there's no specific time, then it, it it's fine. Um, so it yeah, it would be like post Dark Eyes, but like Dark Eyes and everything is pre Time War, isn't it? Doom Coalition. So yeah, so it would probably end up being Time War One or something. So it it all it's fine as long as like you don't contradict anything in Time War One. I've not listened to this set myself. Then it if. You know, um, Harry Potter was 20 years ago. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was 20 years ago. The film, so yeah. Doom Coalition hint, hints around rise and tension between the Daleks, but the Time War itself doesn't break out before the Time War box set. Yeah, so you, like, obviously you'd have, you probably would want to have a chat with Big Finish and be like, hey, do you have any plans for the Eighth Doctor being introduced to the Time War? See if they have anything going on. And then who knows, you could even have surprise finale villain Derek Jacobi. I don't know if that would contradict Hearts of Darkness or whatever, the War Master set, but that's the... I don't think you should let Big Finish constrain you, especially when you've got Big Finish money and Paul McGann's knocking at the door wanting some, and you want to produce a really good sci-fi series that pulls at your heartstrings. That, that Obviously, it's a cliche pitch. It's the pitch that every Doctor Who fan is putting forward, but I do think eight, like Eighth Doctor, Paul McGann in the time war or at the beginning of the time war because it means you can even save money then and you can also go a little bit more experimental with the conflict before it's basically we're invading and we've got lasers and explosions at the end because we've run out of all of our weapons that that's that, that's the um that's the pitch your screen chat seems to be napping on the job today yeah it's it's been annoying i've i've tried to refresh it <laughs> 